What's up, y'all? Farce here, and today we're going to be talking about not questions that you're being asked in an interview, but questions that you should ask in an interview. Considering you're watching this video, I'm going to take a wild guess and say that you have an interview coming up, you did a little bit of research online, or maybe you just know that you should be asking the interviewer questions just as the interviewer is asking you questions. Now, something I want to say before we talk about the five questions that I have laid out in this video is that you should think of questions that you're genuinely interested in asking, whether that be about the company, about the people that work there, about your job in particular. But I'm making this video because maybe these questions that I have that I'm gonna be presenting to you, you want the answer to, you just didn't know it yet. Question number one, who are the members of the team that you'll be on? You're not necessarily asking this question for them to say, yeah, you're working with Bob and Sally over there. No, you're asking this question so you get a better understanding of who Bob and Sally are as people, how many years of experience they have, doing software development, how many years they've been working at the company, and information like that. If there's any other information that the interviewer didn't answer from that initial question, make sure you have follow-up questions like what I just mentioned. Well, how long have uh, they been working here? Have they been on the same team the whole time? Did the tech lead or the senior developer start off in my position? Those are a few questions that you can ask to follow up that in case you didn't get all the information that you wanted. Question number two, where are your former software developers now? The reason behind this question is so you have a better understanding of your potential career growth within this company. If you have software developers who are now senior developers or tech leads or even somewhere in senior management like a VP or a CTO, then you can see that starting off as a software developer at this company can give you good results if you want to climb the corporate ladder. If you just want to stay at a software development position, that's probably okay too. But this gives you a better understanding of the potentials within this company. Question number three is a bit of a two-part question where it's what type of technology does a company use and what processes and practices do they follow? So in terms of technology, you're asking about the stack that they develop with, the languages, the tools, like what IDEs, can I choose whatever IDE I want, that type of stuff. And then when it comes to the processes and practices, do you do agile development? How often do you do stand-up? How long are your sprints? Those types of questions. You just want to dive in. So one, you can show the interviewer that you're genuinely interested in what is going to be going on on your day-to-day -day work. And two, so you understand what you're going to be doing on a day-to-day -day basis in terms of your work, like what languages and tools and methodologies you'll be following. Question number four, I really like asking this question, and it is, why do you like working here? Because it's always nice to hear firsthand as to why someone is working at a particular company, whether they like it for the benefits or the salary or the culture, the people around them, or maybe it's just another job. And of course, the people who are interviewing you more often than not are gonna say how much they like it. This is when you want a little bit of your social deductive skills to come into play. And you wanna be able to read this person to understand if they're lying or if they're actually telling the truth. And when asking a question like this in an interview, it may catch them off guard to the point where you can generally tell if they're telling the truth or if they're lying. Don't call them out on lying or not, just, just just retain all the information that you gathered from that particular question and move forward. Don't don't like be like, ha, I could tell you're lying. It's a bad idea. Question number five, why are you bringing on a software developer? You would ask this question to find out, are they replacing a software developer who's been promoted, a software developer who has quit? Are they expanding the team because maybe the scope of this project has grown? Why are they hiring a new software developer? It's kind of important. And bonus question, one that I feel like everyone should be asking, that is a question about the company itself, about the company's history. I'm sure you've done research on the company in which you're interviewing for. If you haven't, close this video right now after you subscribe and give it a big thumbs up. Go on over to the company website and do your research because you want to know what type of company you're working for, what that company stands for overall, at least in the public eye, and then maybe learn a little bit about the history on your own or in the interview when you're asking this question. To me, the history of a company is incredibly important just to understand where they started and where they are now, the growth of that company, just the overall history. Maybe that's because I've worked at a lot of companies that have a lot of history and I'm a history buff, so that's just kind of my thing. But just ask a little bit more about maybe the future of the company instead of the history of the company. Where do you guys see yourselves in five years depending on who you're talking to? If you have a favorite interview question that you like to ask when you're being interviewed, please drop those in the comment section below. Please be sure to subscribe, like, and cut. That's essentially the end of the five questions that you should be asking in an interview or whatever the heck I titled this video. What I wanna talk about now is a little bit about the channel. One, 
if we haven't already hit it by the time of this video upload, this will be the last video I upload before hitting 100,000 subscribers, or it'll be the first video I upload upon hitting 100,000 subscribers. So if you aren't already subscribed and you found value in this video, please be sure to subscribe and hit the thumbs up button because, well, you like the video. And I've also taken most of y'all's advice on last video. I am indeed going to wait until July 7th. If you aren't familiar with what I'm talking about, last video was about me picking the parts for my new PC build. I'm replacing like a five-ish year old PC, finally about time to upgrade, but everyone's telling me to wait on the new AMD hardware to be released, or yeah, released on July 7th. I'm gonna wait until July 7th, hopefully that week after, there'll be a lot of YouTube uh, reviews if you will so I'm gonna wait until all of that is out and then I'm gonna make my decision on do I want to go with AMD or do I want to go with Intel AMD I'll probably save some money hopefully this new AMD hardware in terms of CPU and GPU are a lot better than the Intel or at least you know, comparable because if I could save a hundred or two hundred or three hundred dollars for something that's essentially exactly the same I'm gonna do it uh, not, I, I don't like to spend a lot of money. So if you're following along with the PC build series, wait July 7th, uh, maybe a week or two after is when episode two will come out of that PC build series once I get all of the parts in and start to put them together. I also want to talk about the launch of the business that I've mentioned every here and there over the past few months I've been working on since probably last summer, maybe last fall, trying to get everything together, thinking about it, contemplating. Now, over the past however many months, I've been doing all of the legal stuff, all of my due diligence, and everything that goes into launching a business. And no, I haven't announced exactly what that business is just yet, but I will sometime soon. And it's looking like closer to the end of July or maybe early August. It just all depends on how everyone I'm working with, because I'm working with a lot of local companies in Virginia, North Carolina, how long it takes them and how long it takes the shipping and, and things of that nature. There's a lot going on. I just want to be honest with you sometime late July, early August, expect the business launch. I'm really excited about that. That's essentially what I want to talk about at the end of this video. Hope you guys enjoyed all of it. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Like I said, a thousand times before. Till next time, guys. Have a good one. Peace.